All right, everyone, we are here today um, at the Ridgely Senior Living. Uh, it's one of Civitas Senior Living's communities in the Southwest Fort Worth area. I am Scott Kimball, one of our area director of business developments. And today I am here uh, with James Black, who is a senior PR manager, so public relations manager. And we are gonna be talking about blood donation awareness. So January is blood donation awareness months. Um, so we are gonna talk about a couple different things here, but um, James, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself as well. Sure, well, thank you. Uh, my name is James Black. I'm with uh, Carter Blood Care. Uh, we are one of the largest blood programs in the state of Texas. Uh, we cover more than 50 counties across North Central and East Texas. Uh, we serve over 200 hospitals and medical facilities wow. uh, with uh, over 440,000 uh, units of blood and blood components uh, every single year. So we are uh, really on a mission to save lives by making transfusion possible. And uh, we, of course, can't do that. We can't fulfill our mission unless we have the donors yeah. who step up, whether they're new or whether they're consistent repeat donors. Uh, it's, uh, it's an important part of what we do in helping everybody else. Um, I know you talked to us about what Carter Blood Care is, um, you know, kind of the coverage area and the mission there for y'all. Um, but how, you know, with us being a senior living community, um, and Civitas has many over the state of Texas and other states, um, and we've partnered well with some of our blood donation drives. Um, but how can blood donations specifically affect and benefit our senior population? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, a couple of, of things right off the, the top of my head is that, you know, for patients over the age of 64, uh, blood transfusions are one of the most uh, common medical procedures that are done, that are performed today. And in fact, one in seven patients who go into the hospital for whatever reason uh, will at some point require blood transfusion. Wow. So uh, it's, it's really important for both on the donor and the recipient side uh, for people to recognize and be aware of the need for blood, it's it's nonstop, twenty four seven. If you think about all the things and all the 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 uh, uh, situations where someone may wind up in the hospital mm -hmm. and they they need blood or they need platelets or plasma, uh, it's it's twenty four seven. And so we really count on all the donors who will step up and, and help us. Yeah, in doing that. Yeah, and I think in any walk of life, we've experience a loved one, a friend, somebody going to the hospital, um, you know, and then our seniors, that, that is just amplified there. So to think one in seven that go in are getting some type of you know, transfusion there and right. needing that. So um, very, very important for us to, to get those blood donations in. Right, exactly. Yeah. And there's, there's not a, a, an upper age limit. So you can start uh, donating in the state of Texas you can donate independently starting at the age of 17 okay. uh, or good, yeah. uh, uh, at the age of 16 with parental consent. So that's one reason that we uh, really also uh, highlight some of our high school blood drives because it's important mm -hmm. to get the juniors and seniors uh, involved in donating now yeah. so we can establish a habit that they can carry throughout their entire lives. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there is no... Uh, upper age limit, we, we were asked that quite a lot, but uh, so long as you're, you're healthy uh, on the day of donation, you weigh at least 110 pounds, uh, you can donate whole blood every 56 days, so every two months mm. you can come in and you can donate. Every 56. Yeah, I didn't realize that there, I never thought about the age limit right. with that, so right. that's good to know. Yeah, to set that precedent, because I didn't, I will be honest, my first time donating was last year. Actually, and it was one of the um, blood drives that was at a senior living community, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I went there for that. But I would have never thought kind of where that age age begins that you can donate. Um, and with that, so I mean that that's some of our our population who can donate really from the age of seventeen up, as long as you're healthy. Um, what is 
the majority of the blood that is donated used for? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. It's it's really it's a range. It's whatever the need is. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the blood is there and that it's available. So. Um, you know, a lot of the instances where we need blood are um, uh, people who have been in serious accidents, car accidents, or they have massive bleeding injuries. A lot of blood loss. A lot of blood loss, anything like that. We need blood and platelets to help them. Uh, uh, folks who are undergoing cancer treatments, 25% uh, of uh, the donated blood goes to help people who are battling cancer. Okay. Uh, because during that the, the process with chemotherapy, uh, they may have anemia, they may have a low blood count, uh, bone marrow may have uh, difficulty during the treatments in producing the cells that they need. So 25% uh, uh, of it goes to help folks who are, uh, who are fighting that. Okay. Uh, and then also uh, folks who have sickle cell anemia, um, mothers who are having difficult childbirths mm. uh, and experiencing blood loss. I spoke with a, uh, a lady uh, in Fort Worth uh, just a couple of months ago who had uh, two really great kids and in both of her, uh, both of the situations when she was in labor, she required several units of blood. Okay. And so I think the, you know, those situations, they're things that, that people may not necessarily think about. Yeah. It's not just the emergencies, it's just those, those everyday uh, uh, kind of common occurrences that yeah. always need some sort of blood. That's why we, we say that 24-7, yeah. we, need, we need something and we need donors to help us out. There we go. Well, with that, you know, any type of blood, are there more, you know, pretty different blood types? Are there more blood types that are, or specific blood types that are in higher demand sure. than others? That's a great question too. I, I think you were studying uh, <laughs> on this, You're right? I snuck it in, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, it, absolutely. Uh, out of all the, the different blood types, let's say that we always, always have a need for O negative. O negative, and that's because O negative is the universal blood type. Universal blood type, right? Okay. Yes. So you have been studying. Yes, yes, well, yes. Thank you. You're prepared. Uh, that just means that whether you are B positive, A negative, whatever your individual blood type. Right. If for some reason you have to go in the hospital and you need, and it's, it's an emergency, and you need to be treated with a transfusion, O negative uh, can treat anybody regardless of what their individual blood type is. And a lot of times when it's a, uh, uh, an emergency situation, every second counts. Yeah. Uh, o negative may be used uh, in the interim until they are able to determine what that patient's individual blood type is. Okay, that's very key. Yeah, so there's an importance for the population to understand what their blood type is right. as well. You know, of course we want everybody to donate, you know, if you're able to, but the, our, our O negative blood types are, are very key. That's as right. Well. So O negative and also platelets. We almost have a need okay. for, for platelets. Uh, which are the, the components in our blood that help uh, the blood clot. So yeah. obviously when there's uh, bad uh, severe bleeding or during surgeries, um, those are times where we need uh, the platelets uh, as well. Okay. And can platelets be donated the same way? Is that is that the same process that's good at the same time? It's actually, it's, it's a different process. It takes a little bit longer um, but you can donate uh, platelets every two weeks. Okay. Um, usually takes about uh, two hours or so. Okay. Uh, whereas when you come in and you're donating cold blood, which yeah. is what most people are used to, that takes a little under an hour. Yeah. Uh, and a good part of that is really going through the, uh, the health assessment first and answering questions and everything. And the actual donation itself for whole blood can take about 10 minutes yeah. but with, uh, with platelets that is a, uh, uh, a different process because uh, your, uh, your, your, those components are being uh, taken from your system but then also the remaining components are being put back in so that's why that takes just a little bit longer okay. to have a whole blood donation. 
Well, and originally actually has a uh, blood drive happening next week. Oh, right. So if anybody were to come to that, can they do their blood and platelets at the same time? Or those like or those have to be two separate visits? Right. With, say? with with our, our mobile uh, blood drives, we just do whole blood okay. elevations of those. For um, platelets, those are done at our uh, donor centers. Okay. Which are fixed sites throughout uh, throughout our, our area. We have 26 donor centers in, in total, uh, and throughout the Dallas Fort Worth, we have uh, a little over 20. Okay. So we'd like to say that we we've got wherever you are, we've got either a, a donor center or a mobile blood drive somewhere near you. We have so, options. Yes, there we, are options. We try today. to make it convenient for everybody. <laughs> We, we, in today's world, we love that. That's so, right, exactly. Yes. It's all about convenience. Well, and, you know, we, we love, I'm sure, our repeat. You know, we talked about establishing that, that process at a, at a younger age, you know, to, to start donating blood. But for our first time, blood donors, and I think we've talked about this, you mentioned briefly, um, what does that process look like? Is, is, how long does it take in, you know, Sure, paperwork. I guess. It's, yeah, and we've and we've tried to again convenience. Mm -hmm. We've tried to simplify that process and make it easier. Uh, we recognize that time is really valuable mm -hmm. for everybody. So to help cut down on that process, we actually have a, 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 a an online um, questionnaire that you can fill out before oh. you come in to donate. So that way, that saves you a great deal of time. Yes. Yeah. Through, throughout everything. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, you can go to our website at carbloodcare.org if you want to find one that's uh, a, a drive or a, a donor center near you. Find a time that's convenient to come in and donate uh, the day of your donation. You can go in and you can fill out that online questionnaire. So then, whenever you come in. We do a mini health assessment where we check on, you know, your hemoglobin, your iron count, uh, blood pressure, temperature, all, you know, all the, the, the regular things. And then whenever you uh, come in and, and do the, uh, the actual donation, that takes generally about 10, 15 minutes. And then after that, you get to uh, go to the can canteen, mm -hmm. which, is, which is a fun part for a lot of folks. Uh, where we have plenty of snacks yes. and drinks and everything, and you can just sit and and, and sort of you know rest for a little bit before yep. you go back out, uh, and then you're done. And then also, you know, we always have incentives that are going on for our donors. Uh, just over the holidays, we had a really nice fleece blanket yes. that we were giving to uh, to donors. Uh, this month, it's a uh, it's a really nice pullover. That folks can can get, but we have different um, different incentives throughout the year. So it might be gift cards or or uh, uh, water bottles, just different things. So there is also um, you know some things that donors can get. Yeah. For setting up and helping too. Well, how nice you get you get an incentive for doing something exactly. that helps other people. So when you when you give, you receive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Yes. Well, and I have done it in, in the process, you know, it's different for everybody else, but after, you know, the after part, you know, there's snacks, there's Gatorade, right. and you kind of sit somewhere comfortable and, you know, just to kind of mellow, make sure everything looks good after the fact. Um, and then once you do donate, what the, let's say the 24 hours after, is there anything that you are not able to do or is, is donating blood really going to affect any of your life after you initially donate? So, so long as you're, you know, you're, you're feeling well and everything went well with your donation, yeah, you should be good. Yeah, of course, yeah. just like with anything, you know, you want to um, monitor and you're the best, uh, you know, your own best uh, mm -hmm. judge of what feels right, what doesn't feel quite right. But uh, yeah, you, you should, everything should be okay. It's almost yes. everything. Well, there we go. And we're going to get into the fun part now. There we are. Okay. The fun part. I thought this was the fun part <laughs> leading up to Yes, it. no, this the is the very, the part. very important part. Okay. This is, is. Um, we're going to, we're going to talk about a few myths. Okay. With blood donations. <laughs> See the fun part there. The right? fun part. Yes. Yes. But no, the, in all seriousness, the, there is fun in the blood donations. Um, that is a very great, very key part. But there are always myths surrounding everything. So I uh, wanted to give this time to just let you talk maybe about two or three myths that you hear often 
um, you know, or anything that's kind of really off the wall out there that, you know, maybe you guys have seen an increase in now recently, sure. um, you know, and then of course, I'm sure on the website or somewhere you can also find, you know, kind of dispel frequently asked questions type of thing. Right, you know, right. I'm sure there's some resources out there for that too. If you want to do your due diligence um, on that, but I'll let you say right. what kind it, of this do we have? It, exactly. I would say, you know, we, we have, uh, some of the ones that we commonly run into on our website at carterbloodcare.org. You can find some of the, the myths, along with, more importantly, the correct information that dispels all of those different myths. Yes. Uh, some of the ones that we, we hear a lot, um, uh, does donating blood hurt? And to that I would say no. I, I would say no. I would right? agree with that. I would yes. say, if, you know, it. Have you ever stumped your toe? Uh, <laughs> have you ever hit your funny bone? Uh, everybody's done that. Those hurt worse than anything that you did, you sure. know, in, in getting uh, stuck with the, the needle and everything. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's something that uh, you don't really have to worry about. Yeah. Um, and, and then also if you think about, okay, you're doing this and it's helping a lot of people. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Um, the little bit of pain, maybe if you do experience it, you know, right. pain tolerance is different for what you're, you're just, getting. Just a, just a little pinch. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, just like, just like when, you know, if you, you uh, get a shot for something, just a little pinch. Yeah. That's it. Um, and then I, you know, we have folks that ask, um, uh, does the, you know, if I'm uh, vaccinated or unvaccinated for the, uh, for COVID. Mm -hmm. Uh, can we donate? Yes. Again, the, the same uh, requirements uh, are true. You know, so, so long as you're feeling well. Yeah. Um, so long as you know 110 pounds, um, then everything is uh, then then you're you're fine. Vaccinated, uh, unvaccinated, it doesn't affect the blood. So right. I think a lot of people forget that COVID is is more is a respiratory disease. Yes. It's not bloodborne. So those elements do not affect uh, the, the blood. They don't affect uh, any transfusion yeah. whenever those are needed. Uh, and then, you know, another one that I think is kind of interesting that uh, comes up, people ask if donating blood uh, uh, causes weight gain. Oh. Yes, and you should ask about some of the unusual. There we uh, go, that's why you yeah. had to. Uh, no, it does not. It does not, I, I'm not sure if, Maybe folks are thinking, hey, I'm going to load up on the Nutter Butters after I donate. <laughs> uh, that, that are in the canteen uh, that you get after, yes. Right. Yes. Um, but no, it it uh, it does not cause any uh, any weight gain yes. uh, at all. But those are those are three just off you know the, the top of my head that we ran into. But again, you can check on our website. We have a full list of yeah. uh, different ones uh, that you can if you ever wondered. Uh, you can go there and check yeah. that out. So if you do have, let's say you have, like we have our, our blood draft coming up here on right. the 10th. Um, and we encourage RSVPs, you know, we want to know who's going to be there um, to, to kind of plan that out. But if you were, so if somebody did RSVP to that, they had a, an appointment mm -hmm. um, and they started to feel sick the day before, could they still, if they felt like, they were healthy enough, but maybe they were coming down with a cold. Obviously, they, you know, you don't want to spread that to people there, but could somebody still donate if they were feeling under the weather? Right, yeah, in that instance, we would ask that, it, again, that you, it's probably uh, best that you don't. Stay home, right, yeah, don't. Yeah, stay home, I mean, it's also, I mean, it's for your benefit, it's for the benefit of everybody that you will uh, encounter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, in that situation, uh, again, you're the best judge yeah. of, your health, how you feel at that moment, and if you just don't feel right, yeah, then you know we're we're going to be uh, back. We'll be in the neighborhood again. So you know we we need the blood, but importantly, we want everybody to be safe mm -hmm. and healthy and take care of themselves too. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. That's uh, that's some good information. Yeah. That we'll cover today. There. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, we, we try. Uh, we, you know, we're just we're we're grateful for everybody that um, comes up and and helps us. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it. You know, uh, something that's surprising to me is, I think, to a lot of folks is that 
62% uh, of the U.S. population is eligible to donate. Mm. But you know, out of that 62% uh, that's eligible, now I'm going to test you. I like the numbers, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I like, yeah. So 62% of Americans are eligible to donate. Out of that, how many actually do donate? I'm going to go with 25%. 25%. Is it really? No. Oh, I thought <laughs> I was like, that's your that's, final that's answer. My that's what you want to go with. It's actually 3%. Oh, isn't, that, isn't wow. that surprising? Yes. Yeah, 3%. Out of 62%, only 3% donate. Wow. So if you think about it, 100% of the U.S. blood supply is being provided by 3%. Of, of our population. population exactly so that's why raising awareness yeah. and letting people know what the process is how easy it is how beneficial it is to so many different people that it's so important yeah we've got to raise that number up because again as, as we talk about at some point in their lives uh, you know, either myself yourself mm -hmm. somebody that we know in our circle is going to to need blood Yes, at some point. I yeah, mean, it's just it's it's an, an it's inevitable. So um, uh, we just yeah we we really encourage folks to step up yeah. and help us get that number up. Well, and I mean I, I don't like to speak on behalf of others, but I can only imagine if you were to know that somebody was needing that blood, and that you potentially helped save that person's life. You know, you don't know exactly where you're, where who your where your blood's going to. Uh, but if you heard that somebody was saved, you know, from a blood transfusion or something like that, uh, you know, a mother during, you know, labor needing that blood and you could have possibly helped that, you know, I'm sure that would make everybody feel good right. there and that. Exactly. exactly. So, and it's the blood that is already available on the shelves that really make a difference. Yeah. You know, like in emergencies, uh, you know, that it gets a lot of coverage as far as, um, uh, blood donations and people wanting to help and they can certainly step up and, and donate at that time yeah but again it's you know you, you never plan for an emergency no. so when something happens the need for that blood is immediate so um, when someone donates it goes through testing and processing it takes mm -hmm. usually about two days okay uh, before that is ready to go out to the hospital that's good to, to know start yeah. treating patients so that's why we always emphasize the folks that uh, you know, it's not just the emergencies when we need blood, it's just, it's every single day. Uh, you know, I'll tell you that there was a, uh, a, a great uh, family uh, in Fort Worth that over the summer, their uh, seven-year-old son was diagnosed with acute leukemia. Mm -hmm. And this was just, and this was something sudden. They didn't, they didn't expect this, mm -hmm. they had no idea. So suddenly now, uh, he has to go through uh, this very rigorous mm -hmm. uh, uh, treatment um, series and blood and platelets are a big part of that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I share that in, uh, in really reinforcing that things like that, that's when we really, you know, we need blood that really makes a difference for folks. Yeah. We've got to have it every single day. Yeah. And I think that I think that is the big takeaway from this, and I, I'm glad we we spoke about numbers because I think those really help drive that point through. Um, and so, you know, we normally don't use these platforms to necessarily, you know, ask. You know, this is an awareness. We want to we want right. to increase awareness. But if you do see this video, or if you've donated, or if you know of a blood drive, you know, we ask that you please share this with somebody. Uh, maybe who has concerns or has questions or skepticism about donating blood. Mm -hmm. um, and always, you're, you have plenty of, of reps and, and staff that could, along with the website, you know, we can go to the website, but others that you could reach out to and speak to a person directly to voice your concerns or, you know, skepticism um, and get those questions answered so you feel more confident and more comfortable to donate um but if you can please you know please share this like i said i first donated last year um i'm in my you know 30s so there was a long time that i could have been donating and i wasn't you know and i was capable of um so we you know 
we, we would greatly appreciate anybody helping out with that. Um, and we are, again, we're going to um, kind of wrap up here, uh, but I want to re reiterate that Civitas Senior Living and our communities are doing blood drives monthly. You know, we are trying to scatter those around and do a blood drive to target different areas. But outside of our blood drives, there are multiple other places that are doing those. There are the donation centers. Um, me and there, of course, is the website to right. get any more information that you might need. Um, but if you have anything else that you want to kind of sure. drop in there. Yeah. Uh, again, you can reference our website for a ton of information that's on there. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions that you might have. Uh, that weren't covered here today, yeah. you can certainly find it there at carterbloodcare.org. Yep. You can also call us if you want to talk to a live person. Uh, they are ready to talk to you and yeah. answer any of those questions. It's 1-800-366-2834. Uh, so 1-800-366-2834. That's Carter Blood Care, wherever you are. Just give us a call and we will be glad to help you out. And hopefully we'll, uh, we look forward to being able to see you at one of our next blood drives. There we go. Uh, and again, this is James Blatt. He is the Senior Public Relations Manager with Carter Blood Care. Um, and I'm Scott Kimball with Civitas Senior Living. Uh, thank you guys for joining us today.